request of loading. And I think it's looking okay, but we'll see. Reputable saloon. You've heard that cow punches are in demand out west since the cows came home, which stands in two reasons. Cows aren't going to punch themselves after all. I don't want to be a cow puncher, but it's cool to sneak over. Spine of your books, Mabel Drew in the Curse of Skeleton Warehouse. Mom gave me this one a few years ago. Weird poster appeared one night. Goodbye, desk. Let's comb my hair. You combed your hair for line one last time. You gained one experience points. Yes. Hey, Russell, how you doing? Go. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Go, go, go. Hey, Russell, click it. Grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed for us. He coos appreciably and nuzzles your hand. Goodbye, babe. Time to head to west to chase my real dreams. You pull the needle away from the cylinder and still wait the handle. Nothing on the hot rack today. What a mess. Ooh, good experience for stacking that. You're gonna miss mom's home cooking. You miss meals with the family. It's mom's pie safe. It keeps all her pies safe. <laughs> Kid's brother's toy box look inside. He loves this stuff. You got item puzzle cube. Check out my stats. Everything's one. HP 20. Art puzzle cube. You br your brother already had most of the way solved, but you figured out the last couple of moves. Yeah. Gaining levels. So tidy. It's covered with all those weird diagrams and charts. Leaving home now, Ma. Your mom's loves warmly as you approach. I'm gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you go, I got you a present. A present? Yep, it's that book you wanted for Crimbo. I know it's early, but. The one about picking locks? Oh boy. The one about desert survival? Or the one about bartering? Let's do. Let's do desert survival since I'll be doing like the snake thing. That's the one. Desert eating and drinking. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you. I will, Mom. Goodbye. Your old pa? Your father Morris Lee jabs at the haystack. Time to leave. Time to leave, Dad. His lip quivers a little bit. Listen, I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's briefcase full of snakes. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Briefcase full of snakes. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Goodbye, Dad. Got a needle. Needle in the haystack. This dear old brother. 
Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervously. He's pretty good at looking nervous. Give him his puzzle back. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Hey Rufus, time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? Um, to get off this stupid farm. To help people. Yay. To Finney's playing Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I keep forgetting to turn those notices off. <laughs> You've read papers, Rufus. The people at West are in trouble. They need all the help they could get. But it's dangerous. 60% of people who go to who go West get killed within a year. And that statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of Mom and Dad. I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think you'll be dead by Crimbo. I'm gonna see Rufus. Okay. You give him a pun playful punch in the arm. She should have got some experience for that playful punch. How do we fight? Go west, young man? Yes. Got booted out. Got some turnips with me. Well, the bad news is that you fell off the cart and got knocked out for a couple of hours. Now you got no ride, no meat, and no prospects. The good news is you're in town rather than in a gulch somewhere. Not much of a town, though. Horsery. Dirt water, not can't forget a chunk of wood from the broken scrap broken board. Can I use that here? Oh my it's my weapon. <laughs> cool. There are lots of snakes in this briefcase. What keeps me from just extra all oh, I can What's to keep me from just extracting the power? There's an eating and drinking. Gives you the foraging skill. Let's get it. And just go foraging. And that's... Unfortunately, unfortunately, while practicing your techniques, you accidentally squeeze the book into book juice, which turns out isn't a real thing. Oh man. Book juice. Your hats. Your pistols. Like a bowling ball. Dang it. Did I actually get hurt from that? No. Still. Dang it, Bobby. Sign of the door reads. Go on drinking. Yeah, oh, it's cow poop next to it. Ah, oh, pointy. There's the saloon. As you walk in the saloon, a crazy eyed guy sitting on the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey! Where's your hat, dadgummit? Well, well, I... You can't drink in here without a hat. Taint popper. Points to take a hat, leave a hat box next to the door. <laughs> no, I'm gonna get something to drink here. I'm kinda... I'm kinda... 
craving a little something. Be right back. <clears throat> Look through the hat box and find a battered derby. That looks like something you'd wear. <laughs> a floppy derby. Thanks, er, Pete. Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy nod. Say, feller. Yeah? You heading west and you want some company? I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Well, er, no pressure. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Ooh, look at my hat. I want Clowny Jane. Spit. It's a spittoon. People spit in it. You know, without even looking at it, it's absolutely disgusting. Oh, I gotta look in it. <laughs> yeah, it's full of spit. Regular spit. Gross tobacco spit. Chewing gum. And it looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting. And the smell. Even from a distance, it smells horrible. Let's look closer. You are now on your hands and knees <laughs> peering into the filth encrusted spittoon. I don't... I don't understand what's wrong with you. Wait, is there something shiny at the bottom? Let's get it! Gross. You reach your hand towards the spittoon. Before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air. Like a greasy fog enveloped the stinky brass horror. It smells like the vomit trough at a mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. Never surrender. You pledge your hand in awful soup. It makes a sound like plop. Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. Search. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> You appear to have gotten some kind of ring. Probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations. Hooray! You got nasty ring. Can we equip that? How do I equip shit? It's our map. It's already equipped. Hey, gives one muscle, mus mysticality, and one moxie. Though getting the ring was traumatic, you have to admit it was worth it. Get one moxie. Kind of seems like moxie is what we need for our guy, maybe? These two players are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how to play poker card game that came with the deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. Good luck, you two. What do you say, Pete? Who, me? Oh, heck, I say all kinds of things. For instance, ding, ding, dang it, there's a hole in my boot. Uh huh. Pete takes a swig of his whiskey. Some hats there. I should probably leave him alone. It's picked. Oh, you can leave. Oh, of course, lock picking. I got the forging one. A woman glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. She's not smiling either. Howdy, I'm Fates. Howdy, Fates, I'm Horace. Nice to meet you. What do you do? 
I'm a town hostler. I don't know what that is. I'm a town horse selling guy. Gotcha. How's that working out for you? Oh, these horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming, nice? No, I mean the horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. <laughs> Stupid. Is that why you're here drinking instead? Mm -hmm. And me being in here drinking instead of watching the horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious circle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One. Kind of a boring one, but it's got four legs and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay. Here we go. This person has a top hat. I want a top hat. You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. And while you're waiting, you see a sign tapped to the back of reward. Reward for lost mugs. 25 meat each. Let's keep waiting. The bartender finally does as you. Howdy, cowboy. Howdy, barkeep. Name's Fates. What brings you to our little backwater? Oh, the usual. Came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any work around these parts? Unfortunately, Boring Springs already has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend talking to the railroad people up in Driftwater. Let's talk about the railroad. The railroad? The Manifest Destiny Railroad Company from back east. They're trying to run a line at Frisco. I haven't had a heck of a time doing so. And they're hiring? Oh, I reckon they're always hiring for one thing or another. Big company, that. What about Dirtwater? Dirtwater is interesting. It's far enough west that it's still more or less exempt from the rule of law, but not so far west that it's been burned to the ground by damn cows. Lots of opportunity there. She pauses for a few seconds, lost in thought. Yep, if I were a younger woman, I'd probably head that way myself. That's about errands. Yeah, the Forsaken Berg is always falling apart in one way or another. The Hosser's always needing help since he hurt his leg. And that no account sheriff could certainly stand to have somebody doing his job for him. Anything else? Well, I got a goblin loose in the basement. Some cow poking him from the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. I could probably handle the goblin. Much obliged. Unlock the basement for you. Oh, and you'll need this. Weak fungus side. What? <laughs> I'll take care of it, I guess. Am I gonna get am I gonna get my ass wrecked? Or is this just for the intro? Old newspapers just take when you got an item. Boring Springs Gazette, April 20th, 1895. So this might be our first fight. Oh. Whiskey. Grab a little. I guess we never established your age. Good thing the legal drinking ages here can reach the top of the bar. <laughs> you got an item, Nurse Brand Whiskey. The goblin shouts, Briark! Okay, well, this is our first fight. Got got to jump on him. You have one action point. Shoost him. Target goblin is 25. I got sneak clip. I'll do a 5 damage. I'll apply 1 poison. Cost 1 AP. What's my AP? I don't know what my AP is. Deploy snake. Pull snake up from the beef is deployed on your side of the battlefield. Not kind of like having a party. I kind of turned them into a little bit. On your side, this will do 25 damage to the target. Assuming the target is goblin. Well, I'll try to save that. Dispatched a goblin, you pat yourself on the back for the job well done. Yee-haw! Skill up, Mox level 2. 
He left spores everywhere, though. You hose him down with that can of fungicide. Let's head back upstairs. Oh, you get a little jump button. Oof. A weird jump button. A weird jump. Hey, good to see you, Fates. You tip your head to the bartender. I took care of that gobble. I'm gonna ask who, who the lady's drinking the whiskey. Who's that lady drinking whiskey out of a beer mug? That's Susie. She's a rancher from nearby. Real tough, bro. I ain't recommend you pester her. Why is that? Lost her whole family to a cow attack recently. Got some pent up frustrations about it. Ouch. I took care of that goblin. Thank kindly, Fates. I knew he was a stand up feller the moment you walked in here. She reaches down to the bar and grabs a bag of meat. Here you go. It's the least I could do for the, for the way of things. 200 meat. You tip your hat to the bartender. I just thought I'd say howdy. Well, then, mission accomplished, I reckon. woman glares at you. Howdy, Susie. Howdy, cowboy, who's, go who's gonna be searching the spittoon for his teeth if he don't leave me in peace. Okay, bye-bye then. <laughs> I wonder if she'll actually fight me if I bug her. Oh, it looks like we did use that, that item. The woman glares at you. I talked to you a few times. Some, and get some meat. The sheriff. Hey, trade. Step right up, step right up. Braid's the name and trade's the game. I seriously doubt that's, that his name is Braid. <laughs> uh, howdy, Braid. What are you trading? Well, sir, today I'm trading locks for soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. That's weird. And to the cunning skinner who brings me three rattlesnake hides. Well, to the metro so I'll find a fine silver pocket watch. Well, I do have the needle, so I might as well go for the dynamite. I'll take some dynamite for the needle. Braid, which is not a name, takes your needle and hands you a stick of dynamite. Be careful with this now. No trades right now. Okay. Oh shit, gotta stop poking myself on the, on the, the cactus. It's a dirty mug here. Grab it. Oh yeah, we're supposed to get mugs for that person. Wanted the bird death. Naked Mike Birdstein to a meat. Wanted poster. Artist, a plain person. Good job. Bimmy Fricker, your face, Steven. Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Boring Springs. I'm the sheriff in these parts. The what? He sighs. The sheriff. Okay. Blasted sign painters. Say you wouldn't have me be looking for work, would you? As a matter of fact, I am. Great, because I have happened to have some. There's a gang of hoodlums around here that call themselves the Fricky Gang. The Fricker Gang. Last time I arrested one of them, they bust, busted them out and took my sailboard with them. I ain't, uh, well, I ain't much good without a door. And? I need someone tough, smart, and or slick to get fetch it back for me. Why don't, why don't you do that? You're the sheriff at all, after all. I gotta stay here and practice my chair tipping. Okay, take a shot. That's a mighty fine reason. Funny you should say that, because I'm sending the deputy along with you to keep you out of trouble. Takes a pistol over the desk and hands it to you. The deputy pistol. <laughs> deputy? You deputized the gun? You're new in town. Maybe you ain't noticed. But there ain't much to do here except drink. Here, let me write down what the Frickers Gang little hideout is for you. Makes a little note on your map. You discovered a new place, the Frickers Gang hideout. Got it. I'll be back with the door. Okay, looks like we got some sad missions here. I keep stepping in that boot. You approach a weird cactus man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, cactus man. Howdy yourself. The name's Bill. Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned you into a cactus. Doc Alex warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill? No, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> uh, does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know, being a cactus? Oh, <laughs> No, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation process inside the cactus part of me keep me pretty drunk most of the time. Yes, it is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You don't happen to have a newspaper or anything, do you? We, we happen to have one. Give him one. I'm not 
obliged, partner. Now, let's see here. What could I do to, for you to return? Oh, I know. My shovel. Left it behind the outhouse at the ore hill mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find use for it. Okay, the ore hole mine. <laughs> behind the outhouse and the ore hole mine. Got it. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now, if you kind of just stick the newspaper to my face before you leave... Talk to the uh, the guy with the horse. I just, I just want to see him. He might have a mission for us too. Look at that horse! It's the most beautiful horse you've ever seen. I got another needle. Good afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? How's business? Oh, you know, every day I'm hustling. Tell you the truth, that's pretty terrible. All my horses keep running away. Well, except for this completely ordinary one. That's rough. Maybe I can help. Oh, God, yes, thank you. Please, I'll go fetch them myself, except for this injury. Be 300 moose... Moose... Uh, 300... Excuse me. 300 meat each for, for finding them. How many are there? Three. Let me see your map. They're pretty much all those run away to the same places. Just three little pretty pictures. The ore hole mine. Gotta go there get a shovel. The Boring Springs Boneyard and the Thousand Snakes Gulch. I like these places. I think they like environments that are thematically appropriate. Here, when you find one... Feed it some of these oats. They should bring them back here. Bag of homie oats. How does that work? They're special pigeon infused oats. It's... Okay. <laughs> Don't want to step in that poop. Topeka, nah, anymore, remember? Some loose dirt. I go this way, then go left. <laughs> Ow, pointy. I wonder if, I can, if I, it's possible to get party members. It doesn't seem like it. Or maybe, unless they give me a little bit more information here to the, to the left. Yourself. There's too far to go on foot. I think it's gonna click on it. I go there. Look behind the outhouse. You got a shovel. Hey, he wasn't kidding. Not that this would have been a funny thing to kid about, I guess. Got a shovel. Got a shovel. Provides an option to dig in certain places. I don't think that's that loose. That loose oil. Mechanism, cargo elevator control, level 1 blasting cap, level 2 plungers, level 3 tools. Just leave it for now. Unrefined meat nugget. He's mining meat. This looks dangerous. At least no plunger hooked up to it. Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry, that's a horse. Is it? I could turn it down. Thanks, sir. Uh, thanks for having some meat looks like something's buried here let's dig it out silver nugget i don't know what that's for but we got it you see the dark horse barely hey girl it's okay i'm a friend <laughs> the horse shies away from you though in this case it's more like the crippling introverted away from you <laughs> oh, come on don't be like that look bought some oats brought some oats for you they aren't poison or anything in retrospect, I guess that wasn't a very comforting thing to say. Let's feed the oats. You take a handful of oats out of the bag and hold them up to the horse. Here you go. She slides away from me warily, making a surprisingly good attempt at hiding her own shadow. Come on, please. Let's pat her on the nose. As you reach out and pat her on the nose, the horse ducks and steps further back into the shadows. Oh, come on. I guess we gotta eat the shit the horse ourselves. Look, they're fine, okay? Take a handful in the bag and toss them in your mouth. It's like the roughest, blandest breakfast cereal you've ever eaten. Still, it's better than dry cat food. Don't ask. You smile to show that the horse that you're fine and realize that you're unconsciously turned around and walked out the door. Jeez, these are powerful. The horse looks at you warily as you re-enter with a cheerful wave. See? Perfectly fine. Feed her the oats. Okay, well, we have to pat her on the nose first. The horse finally seems relaxed enough around you, so you offer her a handful of oats. Wearily, begrudgingly, she eats them, and she gestures at something behind you. You turn around to look, but don't see anything. When you turn back, she's gone. <laughs> that horse is good. Okay, I'm gonna go back to town, back to the town, because there was uh, some dirt here that we could go. Grab. Don't want to step in that poop. Recovered mug. Okay. We're supposed to go to the the Freakers gang hideout for a mission, but let's, let's do everything else. We might be able to get some new equipment before we head out there. A thousand Snakes Gulch. It's rocky shiny. Oof. Oof. Snake looks sleepy, but not that sleepy. Let's fight it, I guess. Oh, hang on, I'm gonna turn this out. Ah, uh, looks like we got a stronger pistol. And a stronger crowbar, ready? HP. Boom, bitch. Oh. <laughs> Why does he hop? Why doesn't he just attack me? Victory! Yeehaw! Skill up. Glamour level 2. I don't know what Glamour does. You collect one venom and one medicine. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. It's our second fight. Fight this other one, I guess. Whoa, they're quick. Kind of looks like our HP is... Ooh, poison. Kind of looks like our HP... Uh, recovers after every battle. One venom, two medicines. Zero out of one for stomach, zero out of one for liver, and zero out of one for spleen. 
don't know what that means. These buggers are just getting stronger and stronger. Whip it. Whip it real good. Ding, 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 ding. has gone snake crazy or maybe he has some kind of other kind of crazy before hey there boy i'm a friend okay it's cool all right be cool don't freak out on me look him in the eye you calmly look at the horse in the eyes one of them is fixed in a glassy thousand yard stare and the other one is revolving madly in its socket like he's thinking of trying to escape in every direction simultaneously it looks to be calming down a little bit now that it's clear that you aren't made of spiders though pat his nose carefully gently pat the horse's nose he twitches a bit Okay, a lot. But seems to recognize that you aren't going to eat his eyes or suck his soul out. Or whatever madness is bouncing around in that skull of his. That's a good boy. Rrr, it's feeding some oats. You hungry, boy? Got a little treat for you. Feed the crazy horse some of the homing oats, and it gallops away with a whinny. Or rather, a whinny, whinargle. <laughs> Hopefully he's heading home and not into, into the 12th dimension. Okay, that's two of the three horses. You don't have to walk all the way back over there. Press M. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna use the map. I was gonna walk all the way back. Founder, Zepini, I'm boring. Oh, I don't think I got a mug in that other area. I might have missed it. Let's dig up the grave. Ooh. Three moves. Ooh, he's kind of strong. Better not miss. Help. Moxie, level 3. He got an old... Um, he got an item. Old cavalry Saber. And a gold, gold tooth. A gold. A gold tooth. 5 to 6 damage for that. Five to six damage for that a saber. Let's do let's do the sword. The sword's cooler. A skeleton. Got the jump on him. Uh, he's, he's gonna die right away. He did. That guy just wouldn't stay put. <laughs> this ghost is a. This horse is a ghost. Your pulse thick quickens as you get near the spooky, translucent horse. You approach the weird, semi-transparent horse, cautiously so as not to startle her. Do you quickly come to realization that this is not a horse that startles easily? Hey there. Hi. I'm a friend, okay? Nay. It's a little strange. How did you, did you do that without opening your mouth? Just try feed her right away. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You had a handful of oats to the horse, but she just sort of stares right through you. Please don't look at me like that. You pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you were going to ride her, you would want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Pat her on the nose again. Yep, still cold. Pat again. Try the oats again. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make oats spooky. Guess I could put some bone meal in them, but I don't have anything honey to ground the bones with. Grave dirt? <laughs> is that a yes? Weird. Okay. Add some grave dirt. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hold them out again. The horse gazes expressionlessly at them, then eats them. Nay. And with that, she glides away in the direction of the town. Bizarre. How bizarre? How bizarre? Timothy Cochrane, Elizabeth Cro Cocaine, Silas, the whole family there. Okay, I didn't find a mug here. I'm wondering if I just missed it. Maybe it's in the f foreground. No, there was. 
goes up there. Okay, let's go back to the town then. <clears throat> we got our treasure. I don't know how you spotted her hiding in that mine, but thanks for sending back my dark horse. Yay. Pale horse made it back safe. Yay. Finding crazy horse. He was eating local weed again, wasn't he? Not that I noticed. That's all of them. I can't thank you enough. Here's a little extra for you. Thanks, brother. Afternoon. What can I do? Can you sell me a horse? You said something about earlier about an injury? Yeah, busting my knee out while mucking out some showroom. Don't ask how. It's embarrassing. I was going to get Doc Ellis to look at it, but she gave up doctoring. Why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself in her office. Said she wasn't. She wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. <laughs> Is that an actual nurse or... Pretty sure she was just being sarcastic. Ah, I see. Okay, I think I think by choosing by getting a horse, that's kind of like our way of getting out of here. Horses, one thousand meat. We have enough meat, but uh, let's let's go finish up all the all of the stuff here before we move on. Are you Susie Cochran? How how'd you know my last name? I saw the graves in the cemetery. I'm sorry for your loss. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters in her whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and couldn't do nothing about it. The bartender said it was cows? Cows, right. I don't know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Ma and Pa used to cattle ranch back before. But... Yeah, I got my sister's birthday later. I'm going to be taking off soon. didn't make it but ma and i managed to rebuild we ranched pigs instead she left me me the place when she passed go on well i guess passing herd sniffed out and it used to be a cow ranch and they attacked a couple days ago happened so fast i didn't have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe cow smashed it in the front door and a fire started out back by the root cellar house went up in blazes just like that how did you do i there wasn't anything i could do couldn't get up the stairs to the kids because of the fire, and I saw Tim Trample right in front of me. I just... She drained her glass. I ain't want to talk about it anymore. Sorry. She refills her mug from the bottle of the bar. And doesn't reply. What will you do now? Head west, I suppose. Nothing's keeping me here, and no desire to stay. Can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It's Ma's rifle. All I got left of it. Of anybody. Where is it? I left it at the ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favor? I need someone to go get it for me. Yeah, I'll go get it. Susie showed you to that boy her ranches. He discovered a new location. Hmm. <laughs> Yuck. Can I shovel the, I can shovel the poop? Ooh, we get experience from that. Might as well shovel up all this poop. Get lost, let's offer some whiskey. Whiskey delivery for you, duck. What brand? Nurse whiskey. Your favorite, I'm led to believe. Didn't know she made makes house calls. Alright, hold on. You hear a rattle as she unlocks the door. <laughs> Holy bunch of TNT. Let me uh, do some looting. Hey duck, can I look at your books? Not until you give me that whiskey you promised me. Guess we'll talk to her first. Doc Alice looks to be about in her fifties. Her hair is green and her face is lined. And her eyes are still clear and sharp if she's bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey stat. Let's give it to her, I guess. She cracks open the whiskey and fills a small flask. Hey, Cora, how's it going? She takes out of her pocket. And then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out the bottle. Jeez, Doc. That doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here? Me or you? Okay, point taken. You grab a pair of tweezers and pluck some of your more unsightly eyebrows. The stove is spotless. Either she's really compulsive about cleaning or she never cooks. Um, shouldn't this be farther away from the fireplace? Okay, thank you. 
just stick figure. It seems like it's good. Has has some good funny jokes in it. Uh, we've only had a, a few fights, so I, I can't say anything about the fights just yet. Doc Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Uh, is everything all right? That depends how fast I get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. I can't talk and drink at the same time. So, she glares at you meaningfully. So, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse cart, and you ask, what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men walking. Why don't you go ahead and pick one, and I'll drink to that. Dead men walking? You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons stagger around like puppets with half their strings cut, looking to bite out one of the living. Oh yeah, there wasn't a skeleton ceremony. Uh, cemetery? It's nice to get some outside confirmation that I'm not losing my damn mind. But how is that possible? It isn't possible. It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients? Oof, ouch. Doc Alice turns away grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and then. You never get used to it. But, well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back afterwards and looking for revenge. It must be pretty rough. <laughs> rough. Buddy, I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients, it's neighbors, friends, husbands. Oh, um, um indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on the bottle. Hmm. Hey doc, can I look at your books? Sure if you want to. Not that they're going to do much good in this doomed forsaken hellhole. You should try being less cheerful, doc. You survey the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical textbooks, except for a few. The Legend of Curly's Meats, The Life and Works of Fred Ferguson, or... The, gob the goblinoid tongue. I'm gonna try that one. Or you can make it make like a tree and leaf. <laughs> okay. The crazy walking? I don't think I got that. I don't even know what that is. The crazy walking? So you start flipping through the Goblin language book. It's confusing at first, and you eventually get so engrossed that by the time you take a break from reading, several blurfs have passed, and you also know the blurf is the Goblin word for hour. You've learned to speak Goblin. Sort of. You got a perk. Goblin tongue. Hmm, okay, let's try uh, Curly's Meats. The book tells you a story of a legendary treasure. A massive chest full of premium meat, secreted in a hidden sense, not in the excreted sense, in the western desert by an old cowhand named Curly Butterfield. Life of the Works of Fred Ferguson. We get some experience for that. This book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it, you mostly just find a list of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad. So it's actually a work of ludicrous speculation friction. <laughs> At least there are some useful appendices in the back and some diagrams of appendices. Let's make like a tree and leaf. Let's ask what the deal with the, the TNT is. What's the deal with the TNT? So when I feel like I'm about to go, I can blow myself into bits so small there won't be anything left to come back. That seems drastic. I'm drastic? Hell, no way I'm taking risk of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. Do you have any idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. A rumor? What is it? It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. <laughs> Anyway, I heard that... What I heard is that there's a fellow out west that's causing a necromancer, they call him. Supposedly he's sending magic out in the world somehow. Magic like the beanslingers use? I never heard of any beanslinger raising the dead. Have you? Her scowl deepens. That'd be one hell of a can of beans. How do we make her feel better? Can we? Can we make her feel better? Uh, about the necromancer. Assuming he exists. What about him? What would be someone ought to try and stop him? Doc Alice gives you a sharp look. You? Because I know you ain't talking about me. Why not you? Gray-haired old woman that knows as much about fighting as squirrel knows surgery? Did you hit your head on a barstool, kid? You aren't that old. You aren't that old. If I were going to pick someone to go up against a necromancer, it'd be someone who else who knows about the death, but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Doc Alice stares at you hard. Takes a swig rum bottle and says nothing. It sounds, it sounds to me that you got plenty of motivation to get the job done. For your friends and, and for everyone. She continues to look at you. You see the gears turning in her head. 
It beats doing nothing anyway. It beats locking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doing any doctoring anymore. Oh, it's just cosmetic. Nah, don't, don't really care too much about it. <clears throat> she winces and looks away, then she shakes her head slowly. You seriously expect me to ride out west by myself? Chasing a rumor? Doesn't have to be by yourself. I'm heading west too. Tang along with me. Maybe we can find a guy and put a stop to him. It's crazy. Impossible. Impossible like raising the dead impossible? Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoughtfully. The spark slowly brightens in her day. Alright, kid. What the hell? Let's give it a shot. Cool. Does it mean we get more party members? Just let me know when you're ready to leave. I'll wait here. Alright. Okay, well, doesn't seem like there's party member party members. Probably just for story purposes. Ooh, my sick jump. I don't think I actually get any actual height with my jump. But it's pretty sick. Let's go to the Cochrane Ranch. All the water in the, tr the tro has boiled away. Oof. Susie's Ranch. Everything's still on fire. Something behind the door is making some pretty awful noise. Ah, oh, it's gonna be a fight, isn't it? How do I get more HP? The outhouse is the only thing still standing. Ah, dagnammit, you got a perk. Mostly scabs. <laughs> what is that supposed to do? Perks. Goblin tongue. Mostly scabs. Plus five maximum HP. You've been poked by so many cactuses that your body has built up an entire extra set of skin caterpillars just to deal with the constant tiny puncture wounds. Gross. <laughs> okay, well, the safe must be back here. Looks like someone was in the middle of fixing a knife. Varmint skin and knife. These pipes, these pies were not safe. Oh, looks like some kind of demon. This thing looks angry. You're not going to make it that safe without dealing with it. Let's deal with it. What am I looking at here? Power above. HP 15. Muscle. Everything is 2. Hot resistance of 50%. So I could probably finish him off with 2 pistol attacks. Yeah. Ooh, he has like some kind of burn status. HP is on fire. The fire is no mask for my bullets. He defeated the nasty cow, skull floating in coffee. Six experience. We have grumption level two. Hooray! Let's grab Susie's knife. Or Susie's rifle. Talk to Susie. Picked up that poop already, so we should probably not have to worry about stepping in poop all the time. You find my rifle yet, stranger? Yep, here it is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as you hand her her rifle, and she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name. I'm Fates. Thanks, Fates. Can't rightly say what this means to me. She looks at her rifle for a long moment, then looks back at you. She sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the old road. If you want me to take along when you head west, you just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. Okay, we still gotta help the sheriff. The sheriff. Howdy, Braid. Uh, we don't have soap. Soap for a lock. I don't have any of that. And three rattlesnake hides. Do I have rattlesnake eyes? Hmm. Thud Freaker. The Freaker is getting intrepid, intrepid look out. It appears to be taking a little nap. Let's ignore him. Beer barrel cactus. <laughs> Stupid. A mug of cactus beer.
finders keepers. We got 25 meat and a mug and a pair of silver cufflinks. Maybe I should shoot that guy. I'm gonna leave him. Don't need to. I'll kill him on the way up if he if he tries to fight back. Get <laughs> past the soap. Got a bar of soap. Nice. You cautiously approach the Fricker gang. They're pretty engrossed in their poker game, so it doesn't actually require that much caution. You get kind of barrel and eavesdrop on their conversation for a while. The one with the eye patch is quiet, but you gather that his name is Snipe, not the squirrely one of his is brother Wimpy. What's your play here? Approach them and talk. Howdy, boys. Deal me in. The one without the eye patch raises an eyebrow at you. Who are you? How'd you get past Thud and Soapy? What do you want? I was gonna say I'm here for the sheriff's door. I'm here for the sheriff's door. I'll show you the door. The door to hell. He reaches for a gun. Okay, gotta fight these guys. Got the jump on them. Let's get rid of Snape. I need to shoot him. He, shoot him dead. I don't even know if I could, if it was a empty mug or a or a bug. I think it might have filled up one of the empty mugs that I already had. Okay, I could probably do this guy. Trying to shoot this target will hit a sturdy barrel instead. Oh, because the barrel's in the front there. Interesting. Interesting. Let's uh, get a little bit of poison on this guy. Ooh. Feel my snake. Whip it. door. Grab the mug. Some meat. That my meat. And the cell door. <laughs> they just have the door there. That yeah, was the exit. Okay. Oh, that was the exit. I got rid of their bosses. They'll be okay. Let's go talk to the sheriff. I see the Fricker Gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you re rescue my cell door? Yeah, and the sheriff did the door, and he hangs it back on its hinges. Nice work, stranger. This here prison cell just got about four times more secure. <laughs> there are, are there any Fricker boys left for me to round up? Yeah, one or two. They're asleep on the job. I'll go round them up shortly then. Looks like I owe you reward. Produces a big bag of meat. Got another little task for you if you got the time. Should be a lot simpler than the last one. What do you need? Well, the Frickers busted the lock when they, they took the door. Gonna need a new one. I'll keep an eye out. Oh, I think I could trade soap for that. And braid. Braids trade. Trade the soap for the lock. Braid. Though you really don't think his name is actually Braid. Takes your soap and hands you a lock. Okay, we're good. You managed to scare up a lock for my cell? Yeah, I got one right here. In the sheriff lock. That'll do nicely. The sheriff puts the lock on the cell door and accidentally drops the key in it and clatters into the cell. Hellfire. Don't you suppose you know how to pick a lock, stranger? You got a needle? <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I do. I think I have one needle. As soon as you get the lock pick, I'll be able to get some real sh sheriff done around here. You definitely picked the lock there. I locked your cell for you. The sheriff walks into the cell and picks up the key. He looks around for a place to hide it. Eventually he sticks it under his hat. Thank you kindly, stranger. If Boring Springs ever gets any more criminals, they better watch out. That's a job you done. Don't mention it. Here, have this as a souvenir for your time in Boring Springs. <laughs> Replica sheriff badge. Yeah. Plus one for armor. My hats, my weapons, my rings, got my got that nasty ring, my food, my booze, 
combat items. Okay, I do find some mugs. I found these mugs. Much obliged. Get in recovered mugs and collect your bounty. You tip your hat. Just thought I'd say howdy. Okay. Thanks again for getting my rifle. Let me know when you need anything, or if you want me to come with you, then when you head west. I wonder if that actually means you get party members. Can you sell me a horse? Sure thing. I should warn you. Horses get mighty attached to their riders. Once you bought one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Which one are you interested in? I kind of want the shifty looking dark one. I'll take the shifty looking dark one. Good choice. She's a sneaky one. I'll sell her for you for a thousand meat. When you say sneaky... Well, she's real quiet. And she likes dark places. Great. I'll take her. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the keys. Here's the keys. Rad safe. Let's give her a name. Let's just call her... Who's gonna be... Oh, it's gonna be Finny. Finny the horse. Are you sure you want to name your horse Finny? Yes, Finny the horse. <clears throat> it's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> Could take a picture of that actually. Finny the horse is back. Ah, let's see what time is it? We got southeast west map. Okay. Got a new map. I think we might be ready to roll out. We helped the sheriff, we helped the bartender, we got everything off that guy, helped out this person. Just know when you're ready to leave. I think we might have two party members, perhaps a doctor and a gunslinger. <laughs> I've been I've been naming Finny my my horses since I think like Twilight Princess. Finny the horse. <laughs> hey DG, how's it going? Once you leave Bo Boring Springs, you won't be able to come back. Any unfinished missions you got will forever remain unfinished. Are you ready to leave? Alrighty then. You're properly ho horsed and ready to start your new life in the West. All you need now is a partner. Someone to share the trail with. Somebody you can rely on for emotional and combat support. You can take Crazy Pete, Doc Alice, or Susie. Go it alone, not recommend. We're going to take Susie with us. She got a nice rifle. You pop back to the saloon and collect Susie. She doesn't know it, but she is my wife. <laughs> oh, one last thing before you go. Up until this point, I've been automatically spending your experience points for you. I'm happy to keep doing it. I promise to give you a nice, well-rounded experience. Shall I keep it up to you, or would you prefer to decide yourself? I shall start spending it manually. Oh, Susie Q, I love you. Susie Q. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
you, you now have the option to turn yourself into some kind of unbalanced weirdo if you want. Open the character screen you want to spin XP. Check my map. You can consult the southeast-west map that Ho Hostler gave to you. It only lists two things, the town of Dirtwater and the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company's westernmost camp. I guess we'll go to Dirtwater next. Oh, there's Susie. So she is a party member. Can she level up like I do? You. Uh, I'm wondering if she's kind of like, um, I wonder if it's kind of like the partners like in Paper Mario. They don't really have their own levels. Ooh, lots of people here. But there's Finny the horse. Finny whinnies as you approach. Comb Finny. Ooh, there's lots of people here. It's your partner. Partner. I'd like to check up on some of the ranches in these parts. See how the bad, how bad the cows' tax are getting. All right, do you know some? Not in great detail, but I know roughly where a few are, or at least were. Guess we'll have to wait and see. There's not, there's one not far from here. Discovered Stern's Ranch. What do you think we should do next? Hmm, if you're looking to get a move on westward, I reckon a train's the way to go. Did that map the hostler gave you give you a marker for some railroad camp or another? Might be worth checking it out. Any other ideas? Susie says you should see the bartender about renting that room in that dirt water. Be nice to have a base of operations. Thanks for the reminder. Room for rent. We do have lots of do have lots of meat. Meat's the currency in this game. Inquire within. Or the, I imagine the game is gonna be picking up in difficulty, so we probably do have to rent. Have like a base of operations. Oh look at that stash. It's a metapod stash right there. Well howdy there. Always nice to see a new face in town. Welcome to the Jew Saloon. Hi, thanks. I'm Fates. Glad to know you, Fates. Folks around here just call me Lloyd. What can I do for you? Nice to meet you, Lloyd. I saw the sign out front. A shot of bourbon is five meat. Uh, let's get the room right away. That's right. Finest room in the house and plenty of room for your partner, too. You interested? How much does it cost? Huh. <laughs> That's where you're in luck. The previous tenant was a blank, was a banker fella, and he paid a month in advance right before getting himself killed by bandits. You seem like a decent sort, so the room is yours if you if you want it. Gratis. We didn't know that he got murdered. Why is he giving this to us? I think something's up. Is that Susie? It's your partner. Hey Susie, what do you think of this place? It's all right. The town's a bit busy for my taste, but it makes ch makes a change from being on the road. Go to wash and dust off once in a while, right? Yep. Then you can go back out and collect some fresh new dust. <laughs> they're just fighting each other, but they're sleeping. These guys must have been falling asleep during their brawl. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> it's an engrossing conversation. Leave them be. This gal, this gal doesn't look like she's in the mood to talk. Let's talk to her again. Hey, Lloyd. Uh, let's ask if he needs, any, he needs any help in there. Well, if you're handy with the mechanical type stuff, something's gone wrong with our player piano. Piano player. I thought the music would sound a little off. Yeah, it's not supposed to sound like that. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, I'd poke around there myself, but I lost the key. This has suddenly taken a strange turn. This is spittoon, which is sort of a brass bucket that people spit in instead of spitting on the floor. Because not spitting at all is not an option in this society, I guess. I say this despite knowing that you're pretty intimately familiar with spittoons already, sicko. That's because the other spittoon we, we came across, we uh, I inspected it, and I found myself a ring piece of equipment. But we're going to inspect this one. Look, the Jewel Saloon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more kind of two kinds of drinks. Poker room instead of a cockfighting fit. But this spittoon is still spittoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside isn't a fancy rancid tobacco spoon. Hmm. <laughs> Here we go again. All right, fine. You're now hunkered down next to a brass filth bucket, which has probably never been cleaned or emptied because you're near the desert and the ambient humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that the spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it accumulates. Gross. It sounds good, right? 
No, that's bad. Because it's the only water part of that spit that evaporates. This brass bucket is half full of the rest of the spit. The toxins and filth that don't evaporate. Several years worth. Distilled and concentrated <laughs> until the consistency of molasses. People aren't allowed to flick cigarette butts in this platoon anymore. Because they bounce out. We gotta search it. You're about to put your hand into a bucket of something that the color and vis vis viscosity of maple syrup. Except, instead of maple, it's flavored with the inside of mouths of people who chew cigars instead of smoking them and have never brushed their teeth. I know. Blah. Feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Except, instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like someone ran over a skunk, waited a week, and then set it on fire. It feels like your hand is dissolving. Keep searching. You found something. You found a tacky, filth-covered porcelain cow figurine. A useless, disgusting thing that'll make a great heirloom for your children, assuming you're still able to have any, and you hate them. <laughs> Just how it goes, eh? Okay, don't worry, you only missed me searching through stuff. Through spittoons. And finding treasure in there. Now I'm gonna go shake this man's hand. It's, it's pretty good so far. Storyline's pretty good. Uh, not I can't say too much about the battle. The battle was nice. It was just really straightforward. Uh, but we only had a few fights. But there might be something there. The old man stares off in the distance, listening to the piano. Try to talk to him. He doesn't react to you at all. These guys are having a spirited discussion about guns, and which is of which of theirs is nicer. Slop. Five meat. Man points to the sign of the counter. Slop. Five meat. Let's buy some slop. Gotta play the slop. <laughs> it's stupid. Uh, I went with snake oiler. I thought about the cow puncher, but it's like, I'll do snake oiler. Sounds like I got some options there. The piano player is not very good at his job. Try to fix him. <laughs> you gotta fix the... Oh, I don't have any needles. He lifted the, the player piano's player coat to reveal the, the hatch on his back that leads to his innards. It's locked. But it's not very good at lock. That's not a very good lock. Okay, well, I don't have a lock pick. It also asked me... Uh, <laughs> it also asked me uh, what kind of skill I got. I ended up getting the harvesting skill. The rules of poker. The Georgia flush beats a full house. A mustachioed queen ranks higher than a 10. A 3 is equivalent to two fours of a club. <laughs> okay. Four nines must be replaced with three trays of diamonds, but are worth the same as three homicide kings of hearts. Okay, I'm not going to play this. The table is full. No one at this table. Uh, I, I only play poker when I could save scum. Hey. How come they're allowed to drink without hats on? Maybe they read his hat. Sign says that see bartender for darts. This is where the chef preps ingredients for cooking. It's also where he parks his beer. The shelf is full of canned and bottled ingredients and the boxes of slop helper. Hey, what are you doing in here? Employees only, bud. Oh, sorry, I was just, you know, looking around. So you're the nosy type, eh? We were collecting hero tags. Well, I prefer adventuresome. As it happens, there's something you can do for me. I'm out of the salt, Peter. I need someone to go pick me up some more. Salt, Peter? Isn't that used to make gunpowder? And other things. Look, who's the chef here? Me or you? Okay, okay. Where can I find it? Your best bet's in the military camp. Because it's used to make gunpowder. Shut up. Nearest one is Fort Cowardice. They keep in the little green jars. The chef marks the fort on your map. Yeah. This lady's too busy washing dishes to pay attention to you. Let's go to the stage. <laughs> A cowbell. Needs more cowbell. Straighten out this. Yeah, I got an experience points for that. Okay, nothing in here. So we need to... Get some kind of lock uh, needle to unlock that thing. Let's go to the rooms. 
This is my room. Oh, that goes outside. Uh, if you keep using your points, yeah. <laughs> it's your bed. Do I need to sleep? There's a postcard on this little table. Blank postcard. Nice view from up here. Look at yourself in the mirror. You insult yourself. You call yourself a chicken plucking possum sniffing jerk. You gain the effect angry. <laughs> Stupid. This is Susie's bed. What's up? What's up, Haas? That's supposed to be the boss. Am I forgetting about anything? Susie says you told the barkeeper in a jewel salon in Dirtwater that she'd fixed her broken piano player. Ah, that's cool. She keeps track of my of my missions. Susie says you should get that salt, Peter. Okay, thanks for the reminder. Okay, we still gotta explore the whole town. Hello there, welcome to Dirt Potter. Where? Ooh, ooh, it's our first real store. Disposable binoculars. Disposable binoculars? Why are they disposable? <laughs> <laughs> we probably need them for a mission, eh? You used to discover a new map location. If you can find a high enough vantage point. Nope, I did not find the whorehouse yet. Modern snake oil. Use this to learn new snake oil means skill. It's an old back issue. How much cash do we have? 720. I might as well buy that for my guy. We can buy a shovel here, but we have one already. Boom. I wonder if I actually got to use it. There's a recipe for a new kind of snake oil concoction that looks like it might come in handy in a fight. Gives good medicine. A skill that lets you recover HP in combat. There's an article with a list of tips and tricks on moving really quickly. Gives quick on the draw. Skill that increases your speed. Oh, okay, this is where we gotta choose one, eh? Depilitating toxins, what are the day? Gives you bad medicine. A combat skill that reduces a target's moxie. I don't know what moxie does in the game. Let's go with uh, quick on the draw. Quick increases the speed. Oh, I gotta take off soon. Uh, 3.30 at the latest. 30 minutes at the latest. You practice the techniques described in the article until you move until you're moving so quickly that you can't even see yourself. You got the skill quick on the, quick on the draw. Then you notice that you, you can't also see the magazine. You must have dropped it somewhere while you're moving so fast. Oops. That's cool. I I, I like that kind of those kind of choices. You have like different kind of skills and kind of choose and play around with what you want. Little girl. This little girl selling flowers. 50 meat for the flowers. Thanks, mister. Sweet selling flowers. We probably need it for something. Post office. We do have a postcard. One of those newfangled telegraph machines. Hi, I'm Fate's Rage. Any mail for me? Mm, nope. Darn. But I'd like to send a postcard. Alrighty, let's have it. You write a quick note to Rufus. Let him know that you've been up to. And that you're okay. Oh, there'll be one of them. Prepaid ones. That'll be zero. Meet then. Thanks. Who the hell is Rufus again? <laughs> There's the jail. And something's available. The clerk clears her throat. Howdy, are you the sheriff here? No, we don't actually have a sheriff. <laughs> Offer to be sheriff. That's offered help. Need any help until you find a new sheriff? Sure, if you're any good with a gun, there's always somebody in need of some justice. One of posters are back there. Cells are over yonder. Two points behind her and off to the right, respectively. So we got two. And like, an empty cell is all ghostly. It's a cell for ghosts. Look at my sick ass jump where I get like no height. Just wanted to say hi. Hi. Well, I'd best be getting back to work. It's a wanted poster. No, wait, it's Miss Red. It's a wasted poster. Close enough. The poster reads, Wasted. <laughs> the Stripey Hat Gang. The Grand Theft Paint and Tasteless Hat Vandalism. Last seen in the city of 
Cavern Canyon. Interesting. Dirty rotten paint thieves and low down no fashion sense hat vandals. Despicable. Let's go after them. Cavern Canyon. Can we go after multiple stuff? Wanted. The house in the desert gang. For mortgage non-payment, squatting, and general public nuisance. Also for murdering two collection agents. Holy. <laughs> Shouldn't that be the first thing? Last seen the house in the desert. 500 re meat reward. You're wondering if the house is named after them or if they named after the house. In any case, the least the least their location is an unambiguous. So I go after them. Okay. Take note of location and resolve to bring the house gang to justice. Discover new map location. Got it. Lot available. Lot available. More lots available. Thanks, this is getting gonna do some planting. My head's too small. But what? Hmm, maybe my head's too big? Howdy. Okay, well. We're supposed to go to Stern's Ranch. The desert house. I guess we'll go check out whatever's closest right now. A few hundred yards up the trail, you see a solitary skeleton trudging towards the northwest. It doesn't seem to have noticed you, or anything else, really. Let's fight it. Ooh, we got a partner! Crack shot. So you will shoot her target for 11 damage, or she could build cover. Ooh, we got some strategy here. But I like my all-out strategy better. Skeleton bone. As you dismount and approach the house where the bandits are holed up, you hear a voice from inside say, What was that? Uh oh Looks like you're going to have to be sneaky if you want to avoid a full-on fracas. Sneaky is my middle name. Wait, really? Yeah, Sneaky's my middle name. Okay, if you say so. Can I maybe I could just jump on top? <laughs> From the sound of it, you say this doghouse contains an angry dog. This doghouse contains an angry dog. <laughs> Very funny. You're not going to be able to get past without alerting the gang inside the house. Let's give the dog a bone. With a knick-knack paddywhack, you achieve your aim. The dog begins continually gnawing the human femur. Good for him. Knick-knack paddywhack, give the dog a bone. This old man keep rolling home. The hinges on the gate are really rusty. If you open, if you open it, the bad side are definitely going to hear. Got the jump on them. 21. 20. <laughs> His name is Art House. Coffee House. Rufus House. Guess we should take care of these dudes in the back first. Ooh, my sword does nice damage. Ooh, bitch. Finny the horse. Oh, did he go twice? I can probably kill this guy. Come on, 11. Damn. I should be okay. Didn't have to use any, uh, any healing items. We got the black hat, desert gains, six gun, bag of ears and such. Gross. <laughs> okay, how's the black hat? Is it better than what I have? Ooh, it's more stylish. This is a fancy six gun. You might even go as far as to rate it as a seven gun. Is this the gun he was using? Will it shoot twice, I wonder?
He just killed that. <laughs> oh, here. We got the porcelain cow. And replica sheriff badge gave me some armor too. Porcelain cow. You have to hold a little porcelain cow upside down because it's filled with tobacco spit. And you don't want it to spill out a little hole in the bottom of it. Gross. This goes in your offhand. Gives me three melee damage. Oh, that's why my sword was stronger. And three spell damage. Wish the inventory looked a little nicer. <laughs> Desert six gun is better. Sweet smelling flowers, fifteen percent stench resistance. <laughs> oh shit, I drank the drink by accident. Oops. dog's gone too. The dog has wandered off in search of better masters. Looks like these feathers won't be troubling won't be trouble for folks no more. Nice job, boss. Yep. Okay, come on, Finny, let's go. Let's go to Stern's Ranch. I guess no um I think it was here we were supposed to go. But we might as well go here since it's like right there. Off to one side of the trail, you see a covered wagon and a small family of settlers who look upset. You folks okay? We're on our way to Dirtwater, but our wagon went and broke down on us. That's rough. You're liable to get attacked by bandits out here, or snakes, or coyotes, or ghosts, or other things that basically live exclusively on stranded tra travelers. Is there anything you could do to help us? Maybe we could give them a ride back to Dirtwater? Alright, I'll give you... Wait a minute, you got two horses hitched this wagon. Why don't you just ride the horses? What? You know how to ride a horse, don't you? Just ride a dirt water. But those are cart horses. Ah, for the love of... Can Susie fix it? Susie, you know how to wagon and stuff? Think you can fix this? Reckon. Susie crawls under the wagon and pokes around for a moment. Then reappears and chucks a dead rat over her shoulder. Rat in your carburetor. She'll be fine now. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You gained 25 experience. Groovy. <laughs> that wagon is a carver. Can I get some needles here? Needle and haystack. There, now we can help out the bartender. It's a safe here. Don't have safe cracking, though. Pile of loose boards. Still some food, let's grab some food. Some weird cow shaped stain on the wall. I don't know what we do with that. What's in the Sam Hill? What's that cow skull painted up on the wall for? It's a little weird, yeah? Who would do a thing like that? Why? Hmm. There's a safe here, but we got nothing to do with it. Blackened beans. It means they're burnt, thing. Eh? Uh, we need lock picking. We don't have lock picking. There's a book inside. Y your deft fingers find a hidden catch, and there's a back panel on the shelf. Slides will reveal a secret compartment. Well, let's take a look. There might be another skill that we had. The first page says, in a little girl's handwriting, this is the diary of Mary Stearns. The I in diary are crossed out, the dry, and the I, A written above them. <laughs> the, the dairy, diary, dairy. Diary starts out as a typical kid's kid stuff. You flip ahead until you notice the writing gets shakier. I found a dolly under a cactus out back. And she told me her name was Grace. Mama and Papa don't believe me that she talks. They say I got a big imagination. Grace says the cows are gonna get us, but Papa says we'll be okay because there weren't never a cow ranch. Grace says he's wrong, but Papa won't believe me. Grace says she could keep the cows away, but I have to play tea party with her. This is scary. I don't like this kind of tea party, but Grace says it's important to keep the cows away. Mama was sad when they couldn't find Effie. Papa said she's been gone so long that they should put a cross up, but Mama won't let let him because she thinks she'll be come back. 
Papa said she's only 11, but how far could she have gone? Mama started crying again. Don't want to play tea party anymore, but Grace says I has to. Papa was out two days looking for Joey, but of course he couldn't find him. Mama cried so much, I tried to tell him... I tried to tell her him and Effie are, keep, are helping to keep the cows away, but she don't understand. I told Grace I'm not playing tea party again, but she says I gotta. If I don't, cows will eat all three of us. She said either I get Mama or Papa to play, or else I gotta play by myself. Just freaky. <laughs> the work of a moment to fix a doll's voice box. Pull the string. You pull the string. The doll's eyes roll back into its head, and its mouth begins to move. Hi, I'm Grace. What's your name? None of your business, doll. The doll's head shakes back forth violently. <laughs> You're funny. Do you want to play with me? I don't have time for games. That's okay. Somebody else will come along soon. You're already dead anyway. Go silent. You should as you realize the talking dolls have, haven't been invented yet. Spooky. I guess we'll talk to her. I'm Fates. Hi, Fates. You're nice. Do you want to play with me? Yeah, let's play. Hooray! Mary used to play with me, but we didn't get to finish her tea party before she went away. Will you help me? Surely. Hooray! The game is almost over. Mary did such a good job. The eyes, doll's eyes roll back forward. Go down the stairs and get my cup. Do you know the magic word to make the mean, mean cow let you into the secret room? No. What is it? The magic word is peanut butter. The doll goes silent. Got it. Peanut butter. Let's go get the peanut butter. GPS doll. Whisper peanut butter. With <laughs> some kind of chalice. Atop the sinister looking altar sits a copper goblet filled with what appears to be blood. We could destroy the goblet, or we can take it. Should we take it and try to find out what happened to this family? Yeah, or I could destroy it. Need five muscle to destroy it. And apparently, we have it. Chill runs down your spine. He's touched a goblet. Secrets. <laughs> I said what I would do, Vantos, not what you would do. <laughs> My tea. We can finish our tea party now. Don't give her the goblet. You don't think it's a good idea to pour blood into a clearly haunted doll's mouth. A little plume of smoke rises from Grace's right nostril. Give me my tea. No. Her eyes narrow. It's okay. You'll be back. Curiosity will get the better of you, and you'll be back. Her mouth snaps shut and her eyelids close. We'll see about that. Let's see what happens if we just try to leave. Nothing left. Damn those devils. Button. Cactus. Cactus bits. Between the smoke and the noise, you're guessing that the contents of this outhouse are more dangerous than the average outhouse. It's going to be a fight. Ooh. Because <laughs> that doll has some kind of agenda. Gain ten experience points. The outhouse is now is now safe as houses. Outhouses. Stupid. By the soft light of the fading embers, you see a glint of light from below. You hold your nose with one hand as you fish out your prize with the other. Got the toilet pistol. Susie carves out another notch in the stock of her rifle. Cow hate flashes in her eyes. Her resolve intensifies. Susie has become stronger. Toilet pistol? So she gets stronger the more cows she, she, she kills? That's cool. Toilet pistol deals stench damage instead of physical. Apply five poison to an enemy. 
Interesting. Mary Stearns, Gwendolyn Stearns, Jethro Stearns. The flower is smoking. Looks like Jethro's bones were dug up by some varmint or the other. Charred locket. Lock on this locket reminds you of why they call it a locket. Let's pick the lock. Carefully pick the lock. Locket. It's a picture of Mary Stearns. It's a photograph of a seriously, a serious-looking little girl. On the back is written Mary Stearns, Thanksgiving, 1894. As you approach the grave marker, the hair in the back of your neck stands up, and a voice whispers in your ear, "Give it to me. Give it to me. Give what to you?" The air grows colder. The picture. The picture of me. I could see it. You have it. You shouldn't look at it. Nobody should look at it. I guess you must be Mary. You don't want anyone to look at it? The whisper gets quieter. Anger seeps in and around the edges of the voices. Because they'll know. Give it to me. You know what? What happened? What I did? Give me the picture. Give it to me now. I want to fight a little ghost girl. Here you go. She sounds pretty serious. You hold the photograph out towards the grave marker and it dis disintegrates in your hand. Thank you. The air returns to normal. You hope Mary finds peace somehow. Ten experience points. Hmm. Interesting. Oops. What did I do here? This item goes on your lapel. Okay, well, I guess we'll see what the ghost thing does. Let's see what. Sure, why not? You carefully pour the blood from the goblet into Grace's mouth. Ah! Grace leaps out of the toy box, laughing maniacally, and climbs the ranch's house ruined chimney. She turns toward. She turns towards you. See you soon. She leaps to the ground behind the house and scampers off to the northwest. Yeah, it's probably fine. <laughs> Just scary. Okay, well, I got, I gotta. As you're riding towards the destination, a flash of color catches your eyes. You parallel park your horse and stop to investigate the source. It's one of those cacti with the rainbow colored buttons on it. Let's collect it. Cactus bits. Hmm. Uh, maybe we can fix the this dude. You picked a lock. You open the hatch and check the machinery inside. There's obviously something wrong, given all the plinkering and sporingering and clicking noises coming out from the gears and stuff. It looks pretty complicated. Uh, let's see what's wrong. You recalibrate some springs and rearrange some gears, and the machinery inside starts operating smoothly. The music improves immediately. Nothing to it. Hey, Lloyd. I fixed the piano player for you. I thought so. He sounds much better. Thanks to heat, Fates. I offer you a free room in exchange, but you've already got one. <laughs> no worries, Lloyd. Who's the old man by the piano? Oh, that's old Ellsbury. Tragic fellow he is. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was a writer and a poet. Came out west to sell his stories, but nobody's were buying. Too weird his stories. Fantastical like. Too bad, I love that stuff. Well, it won't don't matter much now, anyhow. He had to get normal work to make ends meet. Did passing well as a prospector until one day he lost his mind and mind. He what now? You know what I mean. He saw something. Something that made him stop telling his weird tales. Made him stop talking near completely and come to that. He just stands there by the piano nowadays. It seems to calm him down, as long as he doesn't make any trouble. I don't mind him too much. feel a little sorry for him, to be honest. Poor fella. Can I get some darts? Mm -hmm. The sign on dartboard says to see you for the darts. Huh, <laughs> sorry, all the darts got broken months ago. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. Need any help with anything? Nope, everything's right as rain here. Looking for it? Might I ask the jailhouse? Okay, bye for now. Well, maybe I gotta go to sleep to save. You go to sleep. You dream that you're having a strange conversation with your third grade teacher on a train. Somehow all your teeth are falling out. You wake up drenched in sweat. Well, okay then. 
You go to sleep. You dream that you've had a strange conversation with your third... Uh, you wake up refreshed and restored and hungry and sober. Day two. The second day of the rest of your life. Oh. How do I save... I'm guessing it just auto saves. Yeah, it just auto saves. Okay, that will be it for t today. I gotta take off to the city. This game is pretty interesting, though. Oh, no. I might be streaming later. I'm not 100% sure. Good day, guys.